everybody, I'm Gareth Mitchell and welcome along to Click. Today we're talking Bitcoin and the Greek financial crisis, health hacking and solar-powered learning as Vanuatu continues to recover from the devastating cyclone earlier this year. And we will have some expert comment from Mr Bill Thompson as well. Hello. Now, finally, computing in the classroom, Vanuatu style. This uh, collection of southwest Pacific islands was devastated by tropical cyclone Pam in March. But even before that storm, Vanuatu was already on the map for a group of Californian programmers and students. They've developed their own do-it-yourself mini-computers for school students there to learn in class. The team are using banana pies. Now, you may have already heard about Raspberry Pis, their miniature programmable circuit boards that you can configure for small-scale computing projects. And for some reason, the inventors like to give them fruit-related names. Anyway, back to the Vanuatu project. The pies are encased in plastic boxes, then they're plugged in with some other tech, and then pre-loaded with educational content. The boxes are powered by solar panels, so that's where the name Solar Powered educational learning library comes from or spell for short i've been hearing more from dr laura hossman and she's an assistant professor at california polytechnic state university well so once we got the computers out into uh, micronesia we actually installed the first computer lab in a box on udot island in micronesia and a big aha moment came for me when i was showing a video that had micronesians in it and it was about micronesia and nobody in the audience teachers and students included had ever seen themselves in a video so their eyes were glued to the screen biggest saucers saying that's me or that's my street that's my president you know they had really never seen it before and i came to realize without content there's nothing that would keep them glued to the computer if you will so um, and also, once you get out into the middle of, you know, ruraldom and you don't have internet connectivity, all of this technology becomes about as useful as a paperweight if you don't have content on it. Right. So it sounds as if these are your two main prongs, as it were. The hardware, because you need a box that you can take out there and use as an educational tool. And then, of course, on that box, you need content. I wonder if we could talk about the box and then the content. So what is in the box? What is it? So the box itself consists of a 10 watt solar panel. And on the back of the solar panel, we've attached a waterproof plastic box that's see-through. That's important. Um, Inside the box is a voltage regulator bringing the 12 watts of the solar panel down to 5 so you can charge it with a USB charger, a battery so that stores the electricity, and a microcomputer. We're using a banana pie but it's just like a raspberry pie. Basically any of those single board low power micro-sized computers would work. And we're On an SD card, a 32 gigabyte SD card, we've preloaded educational content. There's some code on that SD card that tells the computer to act as a server. And as a server, it's broadcasting what's on that SD card, so our web page, over a Wi-Fi hotspot. So all of that is a shortcut to say it's creating a web-like environment, even though you're remaining offline. And it goes into the Wi-Fi. So if you take this into a school, would the students be able to see it through the the Wi-Fi broadcasting it to a screen of some sort? If you hook it up that way, yes. So at this moment, it's a bring-your-own-device model. So any web-enabled device, a smartphone, a tablet, a computer, and we are providing a tablet with each one of these um, libraries for the first 50 that are being distributed. So that's the... I'm anticipating perhaps your next question here, but... uh, You're bringing the box, you're bringing the computing, and of course, these days, even in remote communities, you can assume that the class and the teachers will bring their screens. Yes, it's amazing how many smartphones you'll see, even when there's no data availability, because uh, family members send these you know, the cost of these devices has come down so quickly. So you have these SD cards and the content is on these cards. What kind of content are we talking about? So it's all open educational resource content, meaning that it's available to anyone on the internet. We started out with a solution called Rachel, and that's an acronym that is hosted on a website called World Possible. And they have Wikipedia for schools, Khan Academy videos, Hesperian health guides, a number of open source textbooks 
that are curated on this website. But what we did was made we we started with that content and we went through and decided what was useful for primary school level. And then we asked ourselves, what do they need in the Pacific Islands? So we did our best to curate content that would be relevant for the Pacific Islands, including a lot of environmental topic information about climate change and geography and a whole lot of videos as well. So that's Laura Hossman with their computers bill based on these uh, fruits name related devices, banana and raspberry pies. Yes, I know. It's, it's, you got to love the naming. I know, and I do. It just uh, makes me feel hungry a lot of the time. And it's a lovely system. The spell is really nice, particularly making a Wi-Fi hotspot other people can get access to, so you don't need to actually be physically using that computer. But you...